When I should have lost my mind You showed up right on time You carried me through the valley All the way on the other side And when pain tried to take my joy That's when I felt you
worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Say, Lord, I worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name, Lord. I worship, worship your holy, worship your holy name.
says wherever you lead said I will follow whenever you call said I will answer oh my Lord to teach me
just a crowd. Oh, 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 oh. And I just want for the last time to sing. Say,
All things are passing. How can you hear you say it? All things are passing. In Jesus. All things are passing. I know that all things are things are Say with God all things, yeah. All things are passing. I know all things are It doesn't matter what the doctor says. I know what God will say. All things are possible. I like that clap. Say, all things are possible. I know I'm rich, cause in the power of your name. Can everybody sing with me? All things are possible. Can you clap for them? All things are possible. I want to hear you clap. Say it all things. All things are possible. Say it all things. All things are possible. Whatever it is, all things, yeah. All things are it doesn't matter what happens. All things hey, are I'm secure with Jesus. Say, with Jesus in the boat, I know. Hey, let's get crazy, all things. Hey, say. Because he knew my heart, he changed my name forever free. I am not the same, I can the master. Because you pick me up. 
turn me around. You place my feet. Hey, you place my feet on solid ground. I think I'm not sure. You don't understand. It says, because you pick me up and you turn me around. Hey, you place my feet on solid ground. And I think I'm not sure. I think the Savior. I thank God. Oh, I thank God. Say no, we thank God. We thank God in this place. Oh, we thank God. Because all things are possible. And I know that all things are possible. Oh, come on, Sh I don't know how you are quiet. I don't know how. I don't know how. Somebody, let the praises of the oh, See, see, it says God inhabits the place where praise is here. So if you are standing at one place, you have to move, 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 move to somebody. Move to somebody and invite them. Tell them, tell them that you're welcome to church. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, amen. joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds wow. because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything and the word of the Lord is blessed that scripture I kept looking and focusing on the word perseverance. And when we think about the word perseverance, it means to do something despite of difficulty, to have tenacity in spite of, to have a sense of determination in spite of. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta persevere. Some of us had to persevere just to come in here this morning, amen? And be determined to be in the house of God. And I kept saying, Lord, why are you dealing with me with this particular word in the verse? And oftentimes God will, you know, allow us to correlate what he's saying, of course, to what our experience is. And I had an experience this weekend, um, very unexpected. <laughs> you know, I had friends in town. They were hosting um, uh, some meetings at Howard University. And, um, you know, I'm in the background all the time. You know, I like help, you know, whatever you need me for, call me. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what I, what I can do to help you. And then I get a text like, hey, the Lord is saying you need to, you know, be speaking this weekend. And I'm like, about what? <laughs> um, and I, I kind of sat back on it. I was like, uh, you know, but I didn't say no. But I was like, Lord, you know, I don't know if I'm really ready. Sometimes we get in a place, you know, after so many trials and tribulations we go through. Um, the enemy sometimes wants to just keep us in a place of being silent about it. He doesn't want our testimony to come out. And I kept doubting in a moment. I didn't say it to anybody, but I was sitting with it. And then I see the flyer come out in my face on the flyer. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't really know if I'm ready to do this because the season, it stripped me in so many different ways. Um, I was like, God, I don't know if I'm ready to sit amongst people. I don't know to talk about it yet, you know. Um, I know I got to go to the meeting, of course, but, you know, maybe when I get there, I'll change my mind and tell my friends, like, hey, I don't think I'm ready, you know, y'all just go ahead. And the Lord kept saying, but just just go, we'll, we'll see. And um, yesterday when I got there, I parked um, on the campus. It was in a particular building on the campus, and you have to pay to park. Friday night was free, but y'all know how D.C. do. <laughs> got to pay to park. So I go to the machine, and... 
uh, to pay for my parking space. And typically, the Lord in this season, in the last two years, he deals with me through a lot of numbers. That's the topic for another day. But I was like, okay, let me try to figure out this machine. I need to put at least the maximum time on the machine. And I always see my birthday, 217. I see my birthday, and I know when God shows me my birthday, it could be a certain time. I always pay attention to what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, what's happening in the moment. And the ticket finally prints out after I figure out how to use the pay machine, and I see 217. That's the time I had to finish, come back and put add money to the meter. I said, 217. I said, okay, Lord, I think that's confirmation that you're giving me the go to go in and just say whatever the Lord has laid on my heart. And in that moment, I felt a spirit of perseverance. I felt the Lord saying, you have the tenacity. I have already graced you for the moment. You may think that it's premature. Because society will say, well, you need to go to grief counseling, and you need to go do this, and you need to go get, you know, all these many things that man has told us that we have to do. But when you have the Holy Spirit as your teacher, that's all you need. That's enough. Amen? <clears throat> and so I persevered through that. Um, it was a long panel, you know, but the people of God were blessed. The campus ministry went forward. The students, everyone who had come from near and far were blessed in that moment. And then God was reminding me of Revelations 12 and 11. After, you know, we shared and ministered, um, I, I, I was thinking, God, you know, but what is it all for? You know, our trials and tribulations come, but they're never just for us. It's always for us to share our testimony. And you have to gear up. You have to strap up with perseverance in order to be ready. Think that even if you think you're not ready, God will use you in a moment to bless somebody else. Amen. It's not about your own trial. You never go through just for you. And that's where we get Revelations 12 and 11 that says, And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And so we literally overcome by sharing. We literally overcome by sharing our testimony of our trials. Whatever whatever our testimony is, we have to persevere through it. So I just wanted to encourage you this morning, if you think you're not ready, you're ready. Persevere through, even in your mind and your heart. It doesn't matter what the enemy has positioned your mind to think. Jeremiah, we have so many examples in the word of God where people will say, I'm too young. I'm not ready for that. And God was like, you're ready. You're ready. And I think society has grippled many of us to think unless you do all of these things, you're not ready. You know, unless this happens first, it's, it's almost like they have stifled the Holy Spirit. But if you have Holy Spirit in your heart and he is your teacher, he's our lead and our guide, you have everything you need to persevere through that moment so that you can overcome and bring other people out from their pits from their pit into purpose. That's what God wants us to do. Amen. So I hope that word bless you this morning. I used to down those desert valleys But now I think for those trials I used to curse the walls around me but now I see you had it figured out we are to the king of kings bless the lord oh god we give you all the praise bless the lord oh my soul come on in the name of Jesus I want you to lift up your voice in the name of Jesus Worship him if you can. In the name of Jesus, I encourage you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. Spirit of God, have your way. Have your way. I've never before my soul. I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
In the name of Jesus, come on, somebody lift your voice. Thank you, Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, upon your soul. No matter how you feel, you want to just bless the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Come on, declare, say, in the name of Jesus. I declare Jesus. over my soul. I declare over my soul. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of declare, the Lord. Declare, say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of my Jesus. Soul. My soul. Bless the name of the bless Lord. The name of I the Lord. exalt the name of the I Lord. Exalt the name above of the every Lord. circumstance. Above every situation. Above every situation. Above every declare, situation. say, I persevere through I persevere it. Through in the name it. of Jesus. Name declare, of Jesus. say, I declare over my I soul. Over I will soul. see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, declare said things are falling in pleasant places for me. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice for the next one minute. In Jesus' mighty name, oh Spirit of God, we exalt you, we extol you. In the mighty name of Jesus, no longer, oh God. Shall the enemy prevail against you? In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We magnify you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Declare it over yourself. Say, my best days are right ahead of me. Say, in the name of Jesus. I speak over my soul. The best days of my life are right ahead of me. Say, in the name of Jesus, as I step out of this place, I walk into the best seasons of my life. I walk into the best days of my life. Say, things are turning for my good. Say, things are flipping for my good. Say, God is going ahead of me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, goodness and mercy. It shall follow me all the days of my life. Declare, say, I will see the goodness of the Lord all the days of my life. Say, every trap and every pit, every strategy that has been set against me, it will not succeed. I will not fall in them. In the name of Jesus. Declare, say, the greater one lives inside of me say the best days of my life the best days are of my right life ahead of me ahead of in the, me. Name, in of the name of jesus say i'm recovering say i'm being reinstated to my glory my to my glory. position, to my of, position power. of power in the name, in the name of, of jesus. jesus father we bless your name we magnify you in jesus mighty name somebody shout a big amen amen can you take your seats? Thank you very much for coming this morning. We don't take your presence for granted. We thank God for our worship team. God bless you. Amen. And I want to thank God for the woman of God. I let um, our welcome. God bless you for your testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray that this morning you speak to us. You encourage us. You lead us into purpose. I pray that you will take over this body, the mind, everything that I've prepared you have inspired and i pray to be a blessing to somebody this morning in jesus name somebody shout amen. amen amen so last week we spoke about the walk it is still from the stories of the resurrection um after the resurrection jesus did not just go into heaven 
um, theologically speaking, he ascended into heaven after 40 days. And that is what the church calls the ascension. And that's the ascended into heaven. So proud to those 40 days, Jesus still existed on this earth. And he intentionally decided to uh, appear to certain vital people in his space, his community. You know, apparitions are powerful because God does not just show himself to everyone. He shows himself to people that sometimes, like the woman of God said, and who feel they are not ready. In fact, he shows himself to people who sometimes feel they are discouraged. He shows himself to people who have decided to sometimes quit. He shows himself to people who have just vacated their position. So we've lo- we, we learned about the story where Cleopas and his friend decides to leave Jerusalem because Jerusalem had become very confusing. There is tension there. Um, they, don't, they don't know the state of Christians at the time. And um, because proud to the death of Jesus, they were on, uh, on, there was a search for Christians uh, because of their belief. And so when Jesus Christ had now died and there is this news about his resurrection, uh, they feared that they probably would get them. So natural sense was that they were leaving Jerusalem to a much more safe place, seven miles down the road, a miles. And as they were going, they had an encounter with Jesus. We spoke about how God met them, Jesus met them whilst they were discussing and reasoning the effects or the things that has happened in Jerusalem throughout that day, the seven days before then, what has happened. And so as they were talking, Jesus comes in. And I want you to emphasize this point in your heart that sometimes God reveals himself, shows himself in good conversations. It's very important. And sometimes you must pray that in your, in your next season, whether at work, in life, wherever God meets you, may the Lord lead you to great conversation. I also mentioned that God loves conversations. God loves conversation. God does not sort of um, mix, minimize this who you are as his creation. I love the scripture in uh, Isaiah chapter 18 verse 1 that God calls his people, let us reason together, come, let us reason. So there was an invitation by the divine God to his creation that come, let us have a conversation. Because though your sins be as scarlet, he says, I have the power to turn them as white. I can make them white as snow. I can turn them around. In other words, no matter how you feel life has pushed you, how people have described you, how you are even described yourself, I have the capacity as God to turn your situation around and turn it, change the color of the situation, so to speak. Somebody say, God is changing my situation. I want to stand on the premise. Um, Hallelujah. I want to stand on that premise and even make a prophetic declaration to somebody in the name of Jesus that God will change your situation. He will change your climate. He will change your story in the name of Jesus. Is somebody receiving this prophecy this morning? In the name of Jesus, God will change it. So we spoke about how Jesus then, after those seven mile walk, they get into Emmaus. Jesus intentionally pretends that he was going on the journey. He was furthering the journey. Then these two men, uh, people begins to speak to Jesus, beckon him that, come on, it's late. You can't just go. You, we have a space here. Come on, let's have some meal. Let's have some time together. And it was in that moment as they were breaking bread that their eyes were open. Now, my question yet last week was that, why would they have made a seven-mile journey with their Lord, somebody they have interacted with, and yet still couldn't see him? I've come to discover that there are many of us we are connecting and interacting, but yet we still don't know each other. Amen. We still don't know each other. Uh, Jesus Christ in Matthew 16 has a similar situation. It was about three years of his walk with these women, and he was about to move into purpose, death. And the Bible says that he has a question for them. Who do men say that I am? You know, he wanted to find out because it was possible that I can roll with you, go to dinner with you. You could see certain things I've done. You could see many things about me. But you could have an assumption and a presumption and all kinds of mindset about me that is not the truth about me. So Jesus says, I will not let my people go I will not leave my people without them affecting or changing their identity or changing their mindset about me. They must change the way they see me. So he asked that question. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know this before even I continue. You can never reach purpose 
Not even Jesus could ever reach purpose without the clarity of identity. You can never reach purpose. You can't reach the height of anything if your identity is not corrected. Have we not noticed it that it's even become even stronger in our dispensation? That before people will even connect with you strongly, your brand identity must be clear. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, if they jump on you, yeah, when I was talking to First Lady, they, 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 before people will even probe you, it, whether it's a job, it's connection, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an organizational meeting, whatever it is, people want to go onto your social media feeds, check around you, check, what are they checking? What are they checking? They are looking for your identity because they cannot make life with you, they can't connect with you, they can't go further with you if your identity is not clear. Jesus understood it so long time ago, 2,000 years probably, he knew that that is a thing. And there's a system. And I pray for every one of us that may the Lord bring your identity, who you truly are. May this season, may the Lord begin to work on you. And you also begin to allow yourself to be worked on. Could, you, could it make sense why even companies, like I was saying earlier on, before they take you on, they will do background inf investigation. The, the, the greater the level of the information they will give access to you, the greater the search and the detailed footprints uh, that they will check on. They will go in deep, deep into your digital footprints to find out who really are you? Who did you talk to? Who, which organizations do you belong to? Where have you been? In the last 70 days, have you been out of the country? Who were you there for? Who were you interacting with? What were you doing? They will check all that because your identity matters to them. Before they assess you or give you access to certain realms, those identity must be cleared. I want us to pray this morning that the Lord will in fact work on your identity. Yeah. There are many people who are in space in Christ that we are actually conflicted about who we are because people are telling us something else versus who we truly are. And, 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 and you realize that if you allow the voices of people to dictate the true nature of who God has intentionally created you to be, it begins to affect and uh, eclipse the true self, who you truly are, that you are nobody now because you've heard too many things that has eclipsed the true, true self that God originally created. It is important we work on our identity. Jesus did all that. He came to have a very deep conversation about them. Then the Bible says that as they broke bread, their eyes were open. There is power in community. There is power when we come together. Ah, yes, yes, yes. There is power. There is this miraculous anointing that God releases on the tables. Come on. Uh, they don't, at the table, you begin to know people, not just because of how they eat. Um, you know, no, 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 no. Some, some, some of us are very uh, sharpshooters, you know. When you go on the table, I mean, the food must, uh, some reason, sharpshooter, you must finish the food fast. Some too, uh, on the table, you hear too many sounds. You see that their, their, their table, uh, their, their cutlery is clanking. Oh, their mouth is making sounds. Whatever it is, it is on the tables of life that God begins to expose certain things to us. Why would the world, if they really want to have a conversation, can we have a tea? Can we have coffee? Can we go for tea? Go? It's not because they want to have coffee with you. Who are you? That CEO who wants to have an interaction with you at the coffee table, do you think you are so important? They want to see who you are. They want to, both of you to come to a recognition. There must be a level of confluence in that space so that the next agenda, the next phase of meeting, the next phase of connection can take place. Oh, yeah, when, when you're dating, come on. Before you said, I do, before you went to that place, the next level of your relationship, you want to go out. Let's go out. Were you just going out for a show? You are going out to know the person. Somebody say, I'll get it better. So all that I'm saying is that God in the journey of life, on the walk of life, sometimes we don't know why we are even on our journey. And purpose is so important for God. You can live, and, and, and some of us today, maybe you've made 45 uh, miles in the journey, maybe 45 years. 
maybe 32 miles, 32 years, maybe 27 miles. No matter the level of the miles you've made, it's important. Hear the word of the prophet of God this morning. God wants you to make an intentional decision that this walk of life, the next phase of the journey, I want to have a deeper recognition of God. I want to have a deeper relationship with him. I want to know him better. I want to walk with him stronger. I want to know him. I want to have deep connection. I, I want to come closer to God. I want to eat with him. What does that mean? I want to eat as well. We spoke about that. It was in those moments in the journey that God, Jesus Christ, begins to unravel scriptures to them. The Bible says that as they broke the bread and they saw Jesus, they made a profound statement, which is very important to me. He said that was our hearts not burning within us when he broke, when he shared the scriptures to us on the road, there was something that began to ignite in their spirit. What triggers in your heart? What, what, what makes your heart burn? When, when you hear the word of the Lord, does it burn in your heart? There's something that you must hear. I shared last week about Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I ate your word and my soul became rejoicing. I speak to somebody this morning. In this journey of life, may we begin to ask God, that Lord, let something burn inside me. The instructions you give me, the things you are prompting me to, the things that you hear the servant of God preach every day, let it bring transformation. Let it change me. Let my heart burn for you. If your heart is not burning, your heart is cold. And I'm sorry, it's not just cold, it's ice cold. And God will probably not do a lot of business with people who are not cold, who are not hot. I will get into that as we build, calling us an apostle. Jesus goes to the Sea of Tiberias because he knows where we are. You can't go far from him. Some of us feel uh, maybe you are watching, you feel like I'm done with God, I'm resigning, I'm giving up. Maybe you have even actually gone far from God. I've shared my testimony with us before that there are days in my life, there were days in my life that I was in church, I was, I was, I was leading prayer, but my heart was really far. I was dealing with some pain and frustration, disappointment. And I'll come and lead prayer sometimes back somewhere uh, in London. And, and, and I'll do all that, but I knew I was distant from God. There was something about my connection with God that wasn't good. I knew it. And you see, many people are there in that space today. They, 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 we come to church, but our hearts are far. There is the disconnect. There is no connection. And Jesus Christ understood Peter. Because his Lord and personal Savior for three years, you promised us. You were going to be with us. We're going to go together. I am Peter. I prophesy that you are flesh and blood. Flesh and blood did not reveal to me you are, you are, you are, the, God, you are the son of God. But, but at this space, I cannot connect the divine revelation I gave versus my personal convictions now. Is there somebody like that? That sometimes the deep things you profess when you are in the anointing and you are in the presence of God versus the reality you are going through doesn't match. And when those connections are not there, you begin to question God. Let me be frank. I, I don't know whether I'm speaking to everybody, but I will speak to myself. There's been moments I've asked God, Lord, I, is this thing real? And there are people who have been through when you've gone through many forms of grieving. You've lost loved ones. You've lost people. These are people you thought you were going to live together with for a long time. You've lost dear relationship. Not necessarily through death, but even just people just walking out of your life. It comes with some level of grief. You've lost great jobs. It comes with a level of grief. And there are many people grieving under the sound of my voice in various forms. And when you are grieving, you begin to ask or draw yourself to the divine. You begin to ask God. That is who you know. That's what your parents taught you. He's the one God showed your parents drove you to. And you begin to ask yourself questions. Why did I go through this family breakdown? Why is my father and my mother not together? Why am I to deal with this tension all my life? And you begin to ask questions. And many times, we begin to go through many, uh, all kinds of dive, uh, different kinds of lifestyle. People begin to act very funny. We get exclusive. We leave the things we used to do. We resign. Uh, if you are a, a, a church worker, you begin to resign. Uh, Pastor Andy, where, where are you? Uh, I've not seen you. Oh, Oh, there is a, all kinds of things, uh, you know, all kinds of excuses. And sometimes it's because something is going on. Maybe you are grieving. Maybe you've lost something. Some, you are just a 
of demon. And I want to speak to somebody in the name of Jesus. Where level, wherever level you find yourself in your grieving process, there is a God that heals. There's a God that brings healing to your hurt. I would never have thought in a million years that today I could live maybe months without thinking about the death of my beloved father. My father and I rode for a long time. We were friends before he passed. And, 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 and for many years, I dealt with those pain. I asked questions. I've longed to have a, a, a father figure in my life. Somebody like Mr. Alban Mante. Never have I found anybody like that. But you know what God does? God is a true healer. He does not just heal physical wounds. He also heals deep wounds, emotional wounds. And I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice that, that may the Lord bring healing to you. May the Lord bring you someone who will be closer than you, than your father. May the Holy Spirit be activated in you. May God show himself strong. May the Lord begin to reveal himself to somebody in the name of Jesus. So the Bible tells us that Jesus decides to visit these friends. When he gets to verse 10, 21, uh, John chapter 10, uh, 21 verse 10, sorry. Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Jesus said, so Simon Peter went abroad and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish and yet the net hadn't torn. Now proud to this, they are actually going to try catching fish and they have never caught anything. But Jesus comes in again. And now they're able to catch fish. Does that not remind you, those of you who track with the scriptures, that Jesus had had the same encounter with them. The Bible says that they have toiled all night and caught nothing. Jesus repeats this time again the same scene. Peter have tried everything and caught nothing. And now they catch something. Verse 12, he says that, now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the, the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Verse 15. After, Jesus, after the breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter. That's my point. Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs. Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Take care of my sheep. Jesus said, a third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus had asked the same question the third time. He said, Lord, Lord Jesus, you know everything. You know all that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Verse 18, I tell you the truth. You were young. You were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But you are old. You will stretch out your hands and, and others will dress you and take care and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he will, he will glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Somebody say, follow me. Here was Jesus after this encounter with, the, uh, with Peter and the rest of the disciples. They've had breakfast on the, on the beach. <laughs> it was at the seashore. They've had breakfast on the beach. Jesus is such a cool guy. And they had a breakfast there. And as they broke bread, the Bible says that they began to see who Jesus was again. They saw him for real. And now in that encounter, here's the thing. Jesus begins to ask Peter. Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me more than this? Do you love me? Do, do you really love me? Here's the why, why probably Jesus asked that question. Jesus in Matthew 16 had, an, had this encounter with Peter. 
We spoke out about that before. They had this encounter with Peter. Jesus asked Peter and the rest of the uh, disciples, who do men say that I am? Peter, you rose up and made a powerful revelation about who Jesus is. You are the Lord. You are God. You are the Son of God. And Jesus commends him and says, the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This revelation about me is not ordinary. Now, fast forward, they've been through many things. They've gone through Gethsemane. Jesus, before then, in Luke twenty-two thirty, 30, Jesus calls Peter out of the rest of the temple. Peter, I, I, there's something I need to tell you. What do you want to say, sir? He tells him that, Peter, Peter, you know what? Simon, Simon, I hear and I feel Satan ha- wants to sift you. Satan has desired you. Satan has barraged you. He, 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 he's looking out to, for you and he wants to, he's snarling like a, like a bulldog. He really wants to bring you down. He wants to spoil you. He wants to change your testimony. Uh, but I feel it in my spirit. That's Jesus. Now he begins to speak to Peter. Like, Peter, I, I don't know why, but this is my feeling. But, but you know what, Peter? I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. Uh, uh, Peter, I have prayed for you. That, 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 uh, it, 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 that scripture can be on the screen. I love it. Luke chapter uh, 22, 30 going. He says that I prayed for you that when you are strengthened, when Peter, you get capacity out of my prayer, you will strengthen your brothers. In Matthew 16, Jesus, after the revelation, I told Peter, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Ah, by this revelation about me, I'll build my church with you. And the gates of Hades cannot prevail against it. There is something about you, Peter. With all your flaws, with your temperamental approach to life, I still see something in you. Luke 22, 30. I see something in you, Peter. This is why I love God. You see, irrespective of your inconsistency, God still sees a thing inside you. He still sees value inside you. He still sees possibilities inside you. You might not come from a five-star family, but he still sees something inside you. You might not be the best of people, but I still see something inside you, Peter. You are not an ordinary person. There is purpose inside you. There is power inside you. There is an anointing inside you. I still want to do life with you, Peter. So, Peter, I will pray for you. I will stand in the gap for you. I will be positioned in prayer for you. And then he says that when you get capacity when you are strengthened strengthen your brothers i want us to understand this the reason why god jesus comes to peter in conversation was to create a heart check somebody wrote that down a heart check you know any true lover of god overcomes if you're a true lover of god all things work together for your good. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know. How many of you know? And we know all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Are you a lover of God? He says all things work together for you. Peter, you can resign. How is the quality of your love for me? If you love me, you won't quit on me. If you love me, you will persevere. If you love me, life will not push you away. If you love me, you will still stand for me. You see, the, 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 the way you qualify love for somebody is when you are easily, you are, there is so, it's so easy for you to quit on the person. The least thing I'm out. You don't love it. You don't love him. You don't love him. I know there are times that I will talk about that in a minute. I know there are some things that I, I myself I will tell you. Hey, this red flag is not even red. It's crimson red. So leave. <laughs> so so there are there are some some signs when you see. Oh God, I will be the first person to tell you that this sign, you can't pray it out. You can't pray it out. So Jesus comes to Peter to ask him, what's the quality of your love for me? If you love me, you won't quit on me. 
But I want you to know, I want you to understand this. That's why I was, uh, I, want, I, want, I want to sing this song about, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Said I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. I worship and adore. Just want to tell you. Just want Say, Lord, I, Lord, I love you more than anything. One more time, come on, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Worship and adore. Just want to tell you. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. There are many of us that quit too easily. We resign too quickly. We give up too easily. But true love will always flow with true service. When you love him, you love to serve him. If you, if you love that girl, if you love that man, serving that person is easy. Serving that person becomes easy. Jesus was asking Peter, if you love me, why did you quit? Why did you resign from what I told you? You've forgotten what we spoke about when we're walking down the road in Matthew 16. What I told you, you are Peter. I changed your name as reed to a rock. I see value inside you, Peter. Why did you resign to the things that you thought you knew? Why? Why do you quit on the call? Why do you quit on the service? When you quit on what I've told you, don't you believe anything that my presence alone doesn't matter? But when, when, when you truly love me, when I'm even not there, you still stand for me. I want people who will not give me just lip service or eye service, but heart service. I want men and women who will be present when nothing is even showing there is a reason to continue. But the conviction is beyond just eye service and lip service. The conviction is stronger than that. There are many of us that are loving the eye service until the camera is on us, until we are in the position, until we are the name, until we are the title. Our service is not strong. We don't love him. We don't really want to position ourselves well. Until we get some qualification or title, there is a reason why we can't do it. And God says that, can I really trust you? So Jesus comes knocking on the heart of Peter. Where is your heart? How, how, is it real? All these encounters we have, is it real? Is it real? You know, the Bible says in Psalm 84, verse 11, it says that for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor and says no good thing does he withhold from those who walk blamelessly. That verse, the, those who walk blamelessly means those who love him. No good thing. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like that. But I came to assure somebody, he says, no good thing. No good thing will he withhold from them that love him, those that are called according to his purpose. He said, I'm not withholding anything from you. Peter, you don't need to go to fishing. The problem is that many of us, by nature, when we are in any relationship, we are comparing what is that person doing? And any love that compares is not true love. Any love that compares is not true love. I am satisfied with you. I've seen many beautiful.
beautiful girls. I've seen many cool guys. Some of them have more money than you. Some of them are more smarter than you. Some of them are like this and that. But I made a vow and a decision. I love you and I'm not comparing you. Uh, It's not that you're a perfect person, but I'm stuck with you for life. I made a decision and my love for you is unwavering. It's not conditional. And, And we transfer the psychology not just into our connection with God, but even in our relationship. I want to speak to a single person here. <laughs> May the Lord fix you right now before you step into that place. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. When make a decision, when God blesses you with that spouse, that girl, that man, may the Lord give you a conviction. I made up my mind to stick with you and nothing changes it. Somebody say amen. You see, amen. when you love somebody, you will not even try to change them. If you're in any relationship, let's talk about love a little bit here. If you're in any relationship and the person is always trying to change you, I want everybody to watch. I want to make a free advert for uh, this guy. The devil's advocate. I don't go so free. I'll good movie. You, you remember how, how Pacino came and was trying to talk to the young girl, trying to change her hair? That is the devil's assignment. Always forcing to change you and create insecurity inside you because as long as you have insecurity inside you, you give power to the person that is trying to change you. May the Lord bring you to a place of power. Somebody say amen. When you are convinced about who God is, when you are convinced about where God has positioned you, when you are convinced about the place God has called you for, when you are convinced about it, nothing changes you. Your mind is not flickering. You are not double-minded. Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways and he will not receive anything. Somebody say, heal me from double-mindedness. Oh, come on. Somebody say, heal me from double-mindedness. When you love the person, you will make time for the person. You will make excuses. You make excuses. You will travel miles for the person. I miss you. I just came. Why are you here? Oh, I just came. I was just walking. Back. You lie. You are not walking around. You intentionally drove four miles, some miles to come and see the person. Somebody said, mercy. You love the person, so you made time. True love makes time. Miles and time doesn't matter. You make time for that person that you love. It's only when you don't love the person you have excuses. And the excuses will come up in every form. There will be excuses for everything when love is not involved. But when love is involved, Peter, when love is involved, you will not give me an excuse. You will rally everybody because I made you the rock. And I told you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. Peter, you are the rock. You're going to lead these people. So I've given you the capacity. I've given you the grace. I've equipped you. And this is not to Peter. It's to every single one of us. The Lord looks at you and he says, I've given you capacity. I've breathed my breath inside you. I've given you an anointing. You feel you are insecure. You feel you cannot do it. You are always giving an excuses. But my daughter, my son, I have fully equipped you. I have empowered you. Before you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb, I knew you, I prepared you I have crafted you for a greater purpose It's time for you to manifest that Serve for me Church, church, live for me Do the things I've called you And listen, I will equip you, I will support you I will resource you Somebody say amen You won't give excuses where there is love Many times we, 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 we give excuses And as you realize that When you are in love You don't dismiss the person's feelings when I'm walking away from you I'm doing something that will hurt you I feel it you know you intentionally know you will know that what sometimes is out of vindictiveness you want to just do it you want to, I want to do it so that it gets to the person when you really love the person you will not dismiss their feelings if you really love God you don't dismiss how you feel you know how you will feel that God is feeling the way you are feeling uh, uh, God will feel something it's, you, he, 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 there is this uh, emotion that you yourself will feel that what I'm doing, God is not happy. I feel it. That what I'm doing, I'm not pleasing Him. I'm not honoring Him. The way I lead my life now, the way I serve Him, the, the lackadaisical way I've approached my, my personal devotion. 
today, I do it, tomorrow I don't do it. Uh, the way I treat people, don't, I, I, I'm not consistent. You see, you cannot please God anyhow. There's a way, there's a format, there's an inscribed way He expects us to live. He says in Revelation, listen, I will spew you out because I don't like your way things. You, re- you really want to be hot for me. You want to be consistent because any relationship will survive and go years and miles when your character, both of us in that relationship, when our character is consistent. God is always consistent. Are you consistent? Are you consistent? Are you consistent in your devotion? Are you consistent in your passion for him? Are you consistent in the way you serve God? Are you consistent in the place God has positioned you? How is your consistency? There's something I shared here recently about one of the powers of our our discipleship is our strategic presence, particularly in our situation. You know, when God calls you, when God calls you as a child of God and you are growing into disciples, to disciple other people, why did Peter... God came to, Jesus came, uh, came to Peter. He said to Peter, I don't want you to, when you are strengthened, in, Luke, uh, in the Luke account, he said, when you are strengthened, I want you to also build your friends. Now, when you are building your friends, the way you build them is through your character first. Because they look at you as the leader and they feel like they want to emulate your example. And so Peter, I want your lifestyle to be the first epistle. To speak about me to the people that must follow you. So your consistency matters to this assignment. You cannot be a flicker in the assignment. You cannot show up or not show out. You cannot be like there or not there. So your inconsistency affects the discipleship of the rest. When they come and they don't see Peter, they also go back. When they come and Peter is boozing or drinking, they also do the same thing. When they come and Peter is some way, they begin to do that. So Peter, you are the mirror, you are the reflection of the leadership I've assigned you to. So your consistency the way you position yourself consistently matters. Let me spring you home. Do you know that sometimes people come to church and they want to see the smile of uh, uh, Mr. Prince? They want to see. Some people come and say, I, I saw this person here. I came because of you. Yeah, people come because they've seen other people here. Your strategic presence matters to God. In discipleship. And let me, I, I, I've shared this before. Even in corporations, strategic presence is powerful in big corporations. Apple, the way they position their items is called strategic presence. There's an intentionality to that. They position it there from the entrance when you are coming. How they position all this. They are telling a story. They are actually communicating to the customer. They are speaking to you on purpose because one thing is not there. It affects everything. It speaks. When you go to McDonald's, all these chain businesses, they are intentional in strategic presence. Google it. They are strategic. Do you think our God is not strategic in, in, in his ways? That our presence as his people matters to the flock. Every Sunday, how we present ourselves. Every Sunday, when we are going out on our evangelism, how we position our, ourselves, the excellence, the beauty, the way every leader or every person positions themselves, it matters to God. The Lord is a sun and a shield to them that love him. When you heed this, Peter, no good thing. What do you want, Peter? I'll give you everything. I'll, I'll give you beyond what you've even prayed for. I will solve your problems. You don't need to go back to fishing. You don't need to go back to fishing, Peter. You don't need to go to it. I want to speak to somebody this morning. God is calling us for the greater. Somebody say amen. God is calling you for the greater. You know, the power of God was seen through his grace towards Peter. God could have dismissed Peter. God could have given up on Peter. There were many people in Israel. There were many anointed people. As I speak, there are more powerful young men. Hey, when they hold the microphone right now, when they lead prayer right now, when they sing, come on, anointing will fall like that. The, the people are anointed. People are graced. People have, in fact, paid some prices. But God, through his celestial wisdom, 
It's no hard to live in the 90 to look for an ordinary person like you. He said, Peter, I have poured too much inside you. Peter was assuming, come on, it was just ordinary. God said, no. I've invested too much inside you to let you off. I'm not giving up on you, Peter. So, in searching for everybody, he goes to the Sea of Tiberias to encounter a man he had invested in. And I want to speak to you this morning that God will not give up on you. I don't know the junction of life you find yourself. You might feel inadequate. You may be asking yourself, but grace is coming in rescue of you. The grace of God will rescue you. There are some of you, you've been a prayer topic for your parents. They prayed you up. They said, God, let my son become a man of God. Let my son live for me. Oh, some of you, there are prayers that has gone long before you, before you even showed up. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you will leave the prayers of your parents. You will leave the dreams of your parents. You will become all that God has called you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, no good thing shall the Lord withhold from them that walk uprightly for, for him. I pray in Jesus' name, may the callings and the giftings of the Lord be activated in the lives of your people this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus entrusts this, the assignment to Peter, irrespective of Peter's inconsistency. He still looked up for him. He said, Peter, in Luke 22 to uh, 31, he said, Peter, I am praying for you. I say Satan wants to sift you like quick. He, want, he has desire. In some version, he says that Peter had come to ask permission, has demanded, has requested. In some version, he says he has desired. In other words, in Greek, it means mara, which means that like a dog snarling, looking for a bone or something. There is this strong edge. He won't stop until he gets you. But I've prayed for you. Go to 32. I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you that you may stand. I speak to somebody that there's some prayers going ahead of you. There are prayers going ahead of you. Say that that your faith will not fail. There are prayers going ahead of you that your prayer, your faith will not fail. I, I, I speak to that person who probably stumbled on this message one day. May your faith not fail. You feel like your faith is being questioned because of the trials you've been through. The Lord says, I'm speaking for you. I'm praying for you. I'm in the gap for you, my son, that your faith will not fail. In the name of Jesus, you will not go back to the things you've left. You will not go back to your vomit. You will not go back to the things you rededicated. You are not going back to it. You will come to the faith. You will stand strong and you'll be bold to defend the faith. God sees an evangelist. He sees a leader. He sees possibilities inside you. You are not a dog to go back to your vomit. The things you, you, you threw up, you are not going back to it. The sins you left, the places you left, they are calling you still. The families you left, the things that you have been familiar with, that you left, that is still calling you. The homeboys, when I became born again, I will never forget some of my friends were like, oh, because the truth is that I had gone and come like seven times. <laughs> oh, I've gone and come. I, to, I told you about my story. One day, <laughs> I went to a, a, a nightclub in Accra. He knew me that uh, this guy preaches that he has become like holy now. But then I, for some reason, I found myself in Miracle Mirage. Those of you know, know. It was a nightclub. Here was I trying to tiptoe and I thought nobody would see me there. And I was with some friends and I was there and then this girl comes. This girl was in the fellowship I was trying to start in. <laughs> Asafu, <laughs> Asafu is that pastor. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> somebody said mercy. When I left that night, about three a.m. going back home, I'm like God. I felt guilt. So I've disappointed God, and I vowed. I vowed about. Yes, some things were marrying me. <laughs> they said, no, you won't go, you won't go. No, no. I made a decision. Let me tell you what happened. I remember in those days, I was reading one of my, a, a book that I've always shared, I've told you before, Becoming a Vessel of Honor by Rebecca, Rebecca Brown. I had a very strange encounter. I had a dream. And in that dream, after those days, I was praying and I had a dream and I fought something. I fought a spirit. I knew I fought a spirit. And I defeated that spirit with a dream. Cut that with a sword. I remember there was something. I know it's a little deep here, but let me just share as a testimony. And from that day, 
the desire for certain things has never been there. When I go to certain spaces, I don't enjoy it anymore. It's as if something is really dead inside me. There are some places I don't enjoy. Some music, I don't enjoy it. I can't. I, no, they don't just connect with my soul. Because something was dead. Something was prayed out. I believe it was a prayer of my friends and my parents. It might be a prayer of God. It might be something praying for me. Somebody was just standing in the gap for me. And that is what my, uh, my prayer for somebody in the name of Jesus. That you will not go back to what you were familiar with. You see, many of us go back to what is familiar because familiar looks okay. And that is why many people go to relationships and they can't really leave it. You know that relationship is toxic. The relationship is brutal. He's not treating you well. She's not treating you right. It's always fight. It's always like just complete chaos. But that is what you know. That is what is familiar. And the devil, the devil is so specialized in just raising and highlighting some good moments and he'll be always selling it to you so that you leave the new accepted and go back to the past family and in the past family nothing was good there anyway it was toxic and he that delivered you will take care of you in the new things I want to speak to somebody don't go back go back to that place. Don't go back to the places you failed. The places that you were mocked. The places that you became a reproach. Much forward to the new places that God has for you. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? In the name of Jesus. I, know, I want you to know this now. Letting go means coming to the realization that certain things are part of your history but not part of your destiny. When you let go you grow. When you let go, you leave things to your history and you are ready to embrace your destiny. Because the truth is that certain things that you you clamored, certain things that clattered on you in the past, don't have the capacity to go into your destiny with you. Peter, you left fishing many years ago. You've not known how I fish. And now you've become a fisher of men. I've entrusted a calling upon you. How dare you leave this assignment and go back to the family. You've forgotten the days you were praying in those fishing boats. Lord, I caught nothing. Lord, will you help me? How you cursed those days and you were angry and frustrated about that. Look at what I've done for you. I've brought you to the face. You don't believe that I can take you further. You don't trust me that I can take you yonder. You don't think I can create possibilities for you. How dare you leave all the future that I have for you and go back to the past where there was nothing. A past that you were languishing and crying about. I've saved you, Peter. I've pulled you out from the back. Don't go back to the toxic relationship. Don't go back to the toxic past. Let go. Because letting go brings you growth. Many of us don't understand, but it is painful to let go. That's more powerful to embrace the future. A future that God has for you. Oh, come on. Somebody say, I will let go. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, one thing that Peter did is say, here is that he was able to understand that suffering was part of the journey. You know, Jesus said something to him. He said, Peter, there's a day coming that you can't wear your sleeve. You can't, you can't dress up. People have to carry you to places. Amongst all the 12 disciples, uh, apostles, when they were being crucified, it was only Peter that also endured crucifixion. He, when he was faced by his murderers, he told them, no, 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 no. I'm not ready to be killed like my God, Lord and Savior, like this. Invert me. So when you read church history, Peter's death was inverted. Instead of dying the vertical way Jesus died, he would die the other way. Peter, and Jesus was prophesying, you will also suffer like me. Is it because of the suffering that you are running away from? Peter had a propensity of running away from suffering. In the garden of Gethsemane, he denied him three times. So Jesus comes back to him and said, I will talk to you three times. 
If you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, feed, no, no, tender my sheep. Feed my lambs. Tender my sheep. Will you feed them again? In other words, I will bring you people who are like lambs. Ordinary people. Not everybody has the growth and the maturity like the rest. I'll bring you people like him. Young men. They are probably your lambs. Peter, don't forsake them. Feed them. Nurture them till they become like sheep. Mature them. And when they become sheep, don't leave them there. Grow them so that they will become rulers, pastors, evangelists. They become the hands and feet of my assignment on earth. Peter, this is my assignment for you. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Tender my sheep. Take care of them. Because when they reach the place of being sheep, they become a little difficult. There's a lot of caring, tender. Tender them so that they can grow and become the chief apostles. My calling for us this morning, we may not be everywhere, but we may not have all the numbers now. But God entrusts you. You are like Peter. If you love me, will you leave them? Will you leave the sheep, the, the lambs, the little ones, the little numbers? Will you leave them? Will you quit on them? If you don't quit on them, I want you to grow them for them to become sheep. They grow, they become mature. And they are not finished. Even their tender them. Peter, tender them. When you tender them, they become rulers. They become leaders. That they can also guide. They become people that you can send out. People that they can become evangelists. They become agents of God in their assignment. Every one of us who have been in faith more than three years, who have known Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior for this long, it's your assignment, like Peter, to have the heart for the sheep. Call them. When you call them, it's not time for gossip. Sometimes, tendering people means pushing them a little bit. Why are you not in church? Oh, I'm a pastor. Oh, I'm a leader. I'm this thing. I'm a... It's an excuse. Sometimes, they are just going, they are going to stay home that day and watch Netflix. Tender them so much because sometimes tendering and care means being a little bit tough. Tough love. Oh, I can't come. I don't have the money. Get them an Uber to come. Oh, but I don't have money. Uh, no, no. Get them. You see, we've not come. We've not grown. We've not matured. We, un- we don't understand this thing. It's, it's become a show. We don't understand the heartbeat of God yet. We don't. We don't. We become nominal Christians, become something, it's transactional, it's business. No, 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 no. God says that my heart burns and yet, will you bear that same burden for me? Where your heart is, there will your treasures be. The assignment is not for Pastor Henry alone. It's for every one of us. We'll be preaching this to give us chance. A lot of things God is speaking to us, but we're preaching this. I want to see a church established. I want to see people who are maturing. Flickering inconsistencies are signs of immaturity. It shows instability. And God cannot do business with you in deep waters with your instability. You can give all the excuses. There's a church. There's a calling. There's a yearning of the God's heart. I pray people will buy into it and will speak to us. Can we be on our feet this morning? Father, we thank you. I want you to just speak to God right now. Jesus. I want you to speak to Jesus. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. I want you to talk to him this morning. I want God to reinvigorate you. Come on, I want you to speak to him this morning. This is just a personal call. I want you to speak to him. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, there are people here this morning that have washed their nets. They've come to a place of conclusion. Lord, I pray you increase their love for you. I pray you whip up their passion for you. Lord, I pray this morning, stand your hearts. Dear Lord Jesus, stand your hearts. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We To love you, babe. What can I say? What can I do? What can I do? But to love you back, but to love you back. Yeah. What can I? What can I? What can I say? What can I do? What can I but to love you, babe? What can I say? What can I say? What can I do? What can I do than to love you back? Than to love you back? What can I say? What can I do but to love you back? But to love you back. But to love you back is all I want to do. What can I say? What can I say? What can I do? But to love you back. I want you to lift up your voice this morning and begin to speak to him right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on. I want you to speak to him. I want you to ask God, the Lord, reactivate my love for you. Reactivate my passion for you. Reactivate my commitment to you. In the name of Jesus, I feel like quitting. I feel like giving up. I feel like quitting. But Lord, I ask you this morning. Oh, shall I make a dollar Love you back, oh, and to love you back. 
this house this morning. Spirit of God, raise lovers for you. Lord, raise lovers. Lovers of Jesus. Raise true lovers. Honest lovers. Sincere lovers. Lord, raise them out of this place for the greater cause and the assignment you have. Lord, raise true lovers. Set through this world. Set through this district. Set through this land. Those who have to relocate, those who have to come from far nations, Lord, raise lovers to build and to stand. Raise the Peters who go back. I say, Lord, I'm washing my net. I'm done with this fishing. I'm actually now done. I'm going back to the call. I pray for us right now, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can I say?
pursue many things. But God says that remember the call. You teach many leadership. You teach many the wisdom of God. I will elevate you beyond your years. Many will sit under your feet. The places your fathers couldn't reach, you will get there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Keep the song going. I want to just read it through you a little bit. Every time it's fast, I want to just read it for you. The man of God, God has ordered you. Your love is. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your love is. I will take over and I will do something with you. And many will ask you, what has taken over you? You need to do something. So much peace and into the month of May. I'll be sending information and when you hear these things I, I will encourage you to respond favorably. Amen. Um, we've not seen some of you on our prayer lines and our calls for a while. Um, you know, I want you to make time for me. It's a sign of your love. May the Lord bless you. May his beautiful face shine upon you. May the Lord give you responses that you've long yearned for. May there be replies. May there be certifications and approvals for your sake. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. I want us to give God our best offerings. And if you've paid your tithe in the last few weeks, I want you to move forward. I'll be honored to pray with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be shy. If you've paid your tithe, I would like the first lady to come and pray. Be come and pray over our tithes in the name of Jesus. I want us to give God our best seed. Listen. We are praying that God will raise partners. When I call about partners, I'm talking about people who say, Lord, every month I want to dedicate an amount to this cause. Maybe it's either your tithe or your givings. You want to say, listen, I'm going to give an amount to this church. I'm going to give a tithe to this house. And I want it to be a seed to continually cause these doors to be open and for this assignment to continue. I want to encourage you to do that. Father, I want to bless everyone that is lifting up their seed, their offerings. Father, you are faithful. You are the God that blesses our vats. You blesses our hands. You blesses our, you bless our work. Cause us to be fruitful. Bless these givers. Honor them. And even those who are not able to, Lord, respond to them, favor them. We pray you favor this house. 
May this place be consistently a fertile ground. In the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. amen. God richly bless you. God richly bless you. Like I said, we are back last week. We did not have our leaders meeting. Uh, it's a leadership Bible study, actually. So it's time for us to learn. When we talk about leadership, uh, there we are not talking about um, just somebody who is uh, called out to be a leader, but somebody who God is going to use as a leader. So it's an open platform for us to learn about certain rudiments of leadership. And I believe that one of the things that I trust God has called me for is to see people rise up into their callings. And you cannot be effective in your calling if you are not great. Amen. I want us to be on our feet and as we wrap up this morning. And our ladies, I want you to uh, remember uh, we have our retreat coming up. Amen. Amen. Come on. Second to the faith is going to be an amazing time in the presence of God. The good thing is that you are even there to relax. I want you to plan to just go there and have some time to relax also, even as we see God's face. Amen. And every one of us, I want us to be praying and trusting God that the move of God will be present in that place, that our ladies will come better and stronger. Amen. You know, the, the Bible tells us in Luke 8, Jesus' ministry was driven by women and actually called some of them Susan, Mary Madeline, and the rest. I mean, the movement of uh, Acts of the Apostles, Paul's ministry was driven by women. So our women get powered. I believe the church will even get stronger. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to somebody, if you don't mind. We are post-COVID, so uh, don't, be ashamed, don't be afraid to get close to somebody. Amen. God has cleansed COVID away. Reach out to the person if you can shake their hands, if it's okay. Prophesy. I want you to just speak one thing to the person. Tell the person, Lord Jesus, uh, what did you hear this morning? I want you to tell the person, what did you hear this morning? <laughs> All right, I want you to be a prophet and a prophetess to the person. I want you to speak something powerful to the person as they leave. Father, I thank you. Prophesy in Jesus' mighty name. May this week be a good week for you, sir. In the mighty name of Jesus. Goodness and mercy follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tell the person I love you. Say, may you be a lover of Jesus all the days of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Say the world, say the future belongs to the lovers of Jesus. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. May the grace of because our Lord Jesus he picked Christ me up. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ turn me around. Oh. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ his love and his mercies follow us all this week in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. To damn those desert valleys, but now I thank you for those trials. I used to curse the walls around me, but now I see you had it figured out, and it was all working for. If only I knew back then what I know right now. Oh, nothing is wasted in your hands. God, you didn't forsake me, and I know you never will.
you didn't forsake And I know you never will Oh, I know you never will You'll never leave me, you never will And I trust you Even when I don't see you I still trust you When I don't understand in the middle of it oh. When I should have lost my mind You showed up right on time You carried me through the valley All the way on the other side And when pain tried to take my joy That's when I felt you
But you didn't forsake And I know you never will Oh, I know you never will You'll never leave me, you never will And I trust you Even when I don't see you I still trust you When I don't understand in the middle of it. Oh. When I 